Today we are going to partially recap the Cyrus 2 amplifier. That means we are going to replace some of the capacitors in this unit. Whether or not you should recap your Cyrus 2 amplifier pretty much depends on your own personal preferences. Some people say it's a must. Others think it's unnecessary. From a technical viewpoint it is mostly unnecessary because a lot of the capacitors in these units are not at the end of their lifetime yet. However, in some versions from the mid to late 1980s, there are two capacitors that are at the end of their lifetime and they are hiding under the green ribbon cable. There is one right there and there is another one over here which I have already taken out. Here it is. This is a 470 microfarad at 6 volts bipolar capacitor and regular viewers might recognize this. Yep, this is another one of those nasty red plastic can Röderstein capacitors. And on this one, as we turn it around and take a look at the side, you can see this thing is all cracked. All around it's cracked. So this is definitely toast. I have it hooked up to the component tester and as we push the button and wait for a little bit 540 microfarads and relatively high ESR. Neither one of these values are bad like in a way that you'd say oh my god the amplifier is not going to work anymore. However at this point this is most likely affecting the performance and with a cracked plastic can it's only going to get worse because over time the capacitor is going to dry out. The approach chosen by Cyrus when designing this amplifier is somewhat unusual. All the coupling capacitors between the different stages of this amplifier are bipolar, non-polarized. That does make sense because you are coupling audio signals and audio signals generally are AC signals. However, most of the Japanese producers simply choose to use their regular polarized capacitors. Those are probably cheaper. So there are a lot of bipolar capacitors in this amplifier and I decided that uh, just replacing those two bad Röderstein capacitors that just wouldn't be worthwhile. So I'm going to replace all the bipolar capacitors in this amplifier and some online research revealed that a lot of people recommend a certain series of Nichicon capacitors. These are the Nichicon Muse ES bipolar capacitors. Getting your hands onto these capacitors is quite a bit more complicated than you might think. I was not able to find them in any of the popular electronic component stores both online and offline. These I actually ordered on eBay and they came to me from Switzerland. What I have done so far is I removed the four screws holding the top cover in place. I also removed the grounding screw for the phono input right there. I got to tighten that thing down again. You can then remove the top cover you can take out the screws all around that hold the circuit board in place and don't forget that one screw right there. Then it gets a little bit tricky. You want to remove this metal bar that pushes the output transistor against this strip of insulating material. Then you want to take a tool that allows you to grab these transistors and you want to carefully wiggle them around a little bit until they break free because they like to stick to the insulation material and you definitely don't want to damage the insulation material because if you do one of your power supply rails is going to be shorted to the chassis ground. If that happens this resistor down here in the corner is going to blow up and you're going to end up with a loud hum in your audio. Once all the screws are out, you can lift the circuit board, you pull it backwards a little bit, and then you can carefully flip it over to work on the bottom side. 
So, I'm now going to go ahead and replace all the orange bipolar capacitors. That should be pretty straightforward, I hope. So, I'm going to turn off the camcorder while I'm doing that, since the camcorder tends to be very distracting. I now have all the bipolar capacitors replaced that you want to replace if you don't use the phono preamplifier. There are only six of them. We have 2.2 microfarads on each side as an input coupling capacitor for the main amplifier, there and there. We have the big 470 microfarad capacitors under the ribbon cable. It's quite complicated to squeeze those into there. And we have one microfarads up there on each channel, of course. Also, a bit of advice, cover the faceplate, because this horrible finish that they put on there, uh, well, I wasn't careful, and as you can see, I scratched it. Oh well. Now, since I do use the Phono preamplifier, I will now proceed to replace all the orange capacitors in this area. I now have all the bipolar capacitors in the Cyrus II replaced. I also decided to do another modification. I removed the moving coil, moving magnet selector switch from the back. So instead of having the signal going through this contraption, I now have just two simple little bridges right there and right there. And last but not least, a little comparison. This is one of the 2.2 microfarad 50 volt Nichicon Muse ES bipolar capacitors that I've just put in on the tester. Let's see what this says. Pretty accurate value. ESR is 2 ohms. And this is one of the original 2.2 microfarad 50 volt ELNA capacitors. Value is relatively accurate, but the ESR is much higher at 7.1 ohms.